Hello, and welcome back to Corona Trials with Brian. Last time, we did a bit of exploring in Aurora Cavern, and one of the things that we found that I forgot to actually put away in the monument is Emerald Number 5. And I believe that's like the last of three emeralds in that area. Yes, Emerald 5 goes here. It appears to be part of the magenta. Uh, and so I think Emerald 4 and 3, as well as the magenta wool, are the things that we will need to find in Aurora Valley. So there's still more to explore back there. And so that's going to be the focus of things as I get started today. Uh, I think I started to get slightly more organized in terms of my inventory system, but I'm going to need more chests uh, with all the stuff that was given to me and then all the stuff that I found around the map. And so I'll have to work on that in the future. But otherwise, I've got my gear kind of reasonably situated. I should probably keep like an instant health potion on the bar. And to start things off, it's also the case we have this enchanting table. I have 21 levels. It seems to me that I found a chain helmet that I left in a chest somewhere out in that area. And so I want to go grab that and do some enchanting, but there's also some other places in there that we need to explore. So I will head over there and we'll get started. I was just walking around the Aurora Valley to explore, and I found a portion that I haven't visited before. The houses that we were in recently are right over there, but there is a suspicious-looking lake over here that appears to have an X in the bottom, and so I wonder if this is either going to be a trap uh, or a place to find an emerald. I'm going to place a block just to make sure that sand is not going to update on me. And then I'm going to try digging in the center of the X, which I should be doing with the shovel since I have one in my bar. Uh, there is a chest here. Oh, wow. That's really nice stuff. All right. Well, thank you, Render, for that. Um, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Two golden apples and a bunch of experience. And what was the other thing? A diamond shovel. Wow. Uh, that's actually pretty fantastic. That's another thing that I could uh, enchant, even with like a just getting efficiency one on it or something. Like a diamond shovel is pretty good. So that is great. I'm a little bit turned around. There's a lot of height differential in this area. And I guess it's just the crazy like auroras up in the sky. Uh, down on the bottom, I think we came in on this level over here. And so I think the chest I was remembering with the helmet is over there. There was like a spider spawner near it that I think I broke. But I don't know if there's an easy way to get there from here. But I'm also trying to see if there's any other places that I've failed to explore. I feel like what I'm looking at across, directly across from me over here with this indented square and the glowstone right in the middle, that might just be part of this. No, there's definitely a circle all the way around here as well. There is something here. So I need to get there. That's also near the chest I'm going after. I'm going to take a little bit more of a look around this area from up top here where I have a good vantage point. There's the red mushroom that I remember seeing at some point in the past. But I think the two places I know I need to go right now are back to that chest and then to see what's over there. All right, and while I'm at the area with the houses, obviously there is a place over here that we failed to explore last time. I just lit up the very entrance and it looks kind of dungeony with the moss stone. And so it's definitely a possibility. Okay, and there's lots of monster spawners too. I'm going to quickly just add some light to a couple of them. And then kind of get back out of here. But this could be the place that contains the wool, I could imagine. It doesn't look like it's actually too bad. I guess while I'm here. Um, yeah, especially while I have a creeper who can help me out. There we go. Um, yeah, the fact that shields block all the damage right now makes that move extremely attractive. These zombies don't appear to be... Okay, that's just a creeper spawner. I guess I let the creeper explode, so it's possible. He was a special creeper uh, who was going to have special drops, uh, but I've gone ahead and broken that spawner anyway. I was going to go break the zombie spawner, definitely, that's back over here. It should be reasonably well lit. I see some more random coal blocks, which makes me happy for reasons that I've explained previously. Um... I don't think you can get sharpness on an axe just by an enchanting it in an enchanting table. I think uh, in order to get sharpness, you actually have to use a book to apply sharpness to an axe. Um, and so that's the reason that I haven't bothered enchanting any weapons yet. And the axe is still by far my highest damage weapon. 
So I plan to stick with that in the near term. And then I've got the record uh, when I just need knockback and crowd control. And OK, there's a spider over here. Looks like another spider over here. All right, let's go ahead and knock these guys back a little bit, maybe. Hey, all right, this is not working out the way I wanted it to. Uh, I do need to heal. There we go. OK. Just making sure that I do indeed have the knockback record and didn't take the wrong one. Let's do this. Let's eat a couple pieces of bread. I did switch to some fresh leather armor, as you may have noticed, uh, because my leather was getting worn down. This will probably still last me a while, the chest plate, so I'm not as worried about that. Um, I didn't see where the spider spawner was, I think, assuming there was... Okay, there is a spider spawner over here, and now there's also a skeleton. I see now where the spider spawner was approximately. Uh, gosh darn it. I'm taking a lot of damage here that I ought not be taking. Okay, the spiders are still coming after me, and the skeleton, I guess I can use my bow and arrow. Ooh, okay, he dropped sharpness two stone axe. Remember I was just saying uh, it'd be nice to have an enchanted axe? Um, well, you look at that. Apparently, Render went through time traveling mechanism of some sort and heard that comment and decided to add this drop. It's actually rather reminiscent of a drop that I had in Vanilla Swirl. Oops, hey. Okay, great. Um, so that is cool. So apparently the spider's here. I guess I'll leave that lit up. I'm not sure if that's particular to uh, spiders that come out of that spawner have a chance of having a drop of a sharpness two axe or perhaps some other things in the loot tables. Um, but that was definitely a nice drop. Oh, there's some more lapis here too for extra enchanting. And I actually saw some iron in the wall and it looks like some kind of uh, enchanted, or sorry, some kind of nice chest item. And more spiders here. Okay, but now I think we have this whole area lit up. Uh, and so let me try to kill off some of the stragglers with my new weapon, which... Uh, did I just one-shot that guy? Um, I'll have to test out a couple more spiders and see if I can possibly one-shot enemies. If I can hit them. Okay, probably not one-shotting. Yeah, even with the crit. Um, but I'm sure it's doing more damage. Actually, does it tell me the tooltip? 10.5 attack damage with this level of sharpness. That's pretty cool. Um, yes, so iron. You always worry about if the iron might be trapped. And then there's a chest over here. And there's a little bit of lapis in the floor. And it's slightly dark over in this corner, but I think we've got things well enough lit up. That we don't have to worry about more spawns. I'll go after the iron in a minute. Oh! Bookshelves and enchant- wow, okay. Render is being extremely generous with the loot in the map thus far. Um, let's see. I do not need a spider eye. So I'll take another treasure chest named treasure chest. And let's see. I could definitely afford to try to go after some iron. So I'm going to try to mine it up uh, if there are any traps that go off. If I were Render and I were hiding a trap here, I think it would be behind this one or this one. Okay, that one's not a trap. And so my hunch is that there won't be any traps here. I'm going to mine this off camera, but I'll bring you guys back if something explodes or something crazy. All right, so I didn't mine up everything, but I got 27 iron, I got some more lapis, I got some more blocks of coal. My inventory is relatively full, so now I'm going to travel back home, drop some things off, and we'll probably do our first bit of enchanting. Oh, it is nighttime out. Why don't I also, for safety, quickly go and sleep in a bed? I don't think that creeper saw me. And then I'll head home. Back at home, I've set up a tiny enchanting area. We already have tons of experience bottles. And I made, with the iron that I just got, some armor pieces. I'm going to keep on the projectile protection test plate. But basically, just want to see uh, what kinds of enchants we can get on the various pieces of armor. It's actually a little bit hard to get protection one on a helmet. So I'm going to go ahead and spend that right now just to get that. Uh, pants. Looks like we could even get protection 2 at level 10. That seems pretty great. So I will go ahead and grab that. And for boots, 
Uh, feather falling one would be pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and take that. And it's also got some fire protection, great. And I assume I can get efficiency one pretty easily on the shovel. So we'll go ahead and do that. And finally, I made an iron pickaxe, which I should also be able to get. Hey, here's efficiency two, uh, which I am pretty happy with. All right. And yeah, that's already quite the upgrade. Prot one, prot two, feather falling and fire protection, and that has projectile protection on it. And we now have a great shovel and a very good pickaxe. And we already had a good stone axe. So yeah, I feel like we're in really good shape already. I'm back at the original entrance to Aurora Valley. And now we'll try to go to the left-hand side. I guess the chest that had the chain helmet is no longer as interesting to me since I've got an iron helmet with some protection on it. But I am still interested to see the circle of glowstone in the wall because I'm sure there'll be some kind of secret there. I'm not sure if it's going to be an emerald or what exactly it's going to be. But we'll head back over in this direction. I don't think we've been over here since like episode two or something. Uh, yeah, but basically I think it might have been this. Yes, right here. There is a chain helmet and that and I can definitely make more bows. I'll take the arrows. Wood and ladders, those things are nice, and name tags, they'll stack, so I'll grab those. I don't need these stone tools anymore, definitely. So those are things that I'd remembered leaving behind. I think that was it. I think there was another chest somewhere farther up. But then up here, right there, is our next destination that we saw from across the way. And is there any way to get up here other than just pillaring? Not that I can tell, but I have a fair number of these blocks. I think that's still just a lighting glitch. So I'm not going to go investigate that. I do have a tiny bit of feather falling now, but I could still fall from a great height here. So let's be careful just to make sure there's no obvious creepers or skeletons who are about to surprise me up here. Okay, but this is the center of the thing. So if I needed to run away, I could run pretty far down there. Okay, there's more glowstone in the center here. That's nice. Is there something behind the glowstone? Yes, there is a chest. And based on what I'm starting to learn about this map, I'm guessing this would not be trapped. Wow, diamond axe. Okay. <laughs> Very nice loot hidden in these. I mean, this is basically, other than the starting area, this is like the first area, effectively. Um, so that was nice to find. It was relatively well marked with the circle of glowstone and then the glowstone in the indentation. Um, and so it wasn't too difficult to find. I don't know if I'm going to want glowstone later. Uh, and since there's so much of it here that doesn't need to be here, I'm going to just go ahead and grab some. Um, I still have no idea where the like wool dungeon is in this area, as well as where the other emeralds would be hidden. So I think I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time just kind of looking around to see what else I can find. Oh, hey, I just came across kind of the bridge from the area of the houses. I'm kind of in the center. There's a chest over here uh, that I have not spotted before, just at the base of a tree. There's also a zombie. Ooh, I don't know if he's a natural spawn. Is this at all suspicious, this little tiny puddle of water here either? Oh, hello. All right. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit more uh, cover over here for darkness and monster spawns. Okay, that's where we got the the record. So let's go back to the chest sitting at the base of the tree and see what it has in store for us. Still haven't spied other places to go. Um, but the fact that I'm finding new things gives me hope. Okay, wood. Very nice. Um, I'm probably not going to need the zombie flesh. And I'm probably not going to need the leather, so we'll just go ahead and stack some of those out of my inventory. Yeah, inventory's pretty full. Um, and I'm trying to make my way kind of like back over towards the monument, but trying to look around for some new places that I haven't really explored along the way as well. All right, I found another chest in the back of the area. So the front where you come in is over there. And there's just a chest here. This is kind of below the red mushroom. I'm going to head up there next. Blistering Blade. All right. Smite, knockback, unbreaking. That's not bad as a sword. Uh, I will put away the feather, I suppose. And next I'm going to try to go up here. All right, up at the red mushroom 
It is a gigantic red mushroom. Some very large trees. Don't really hear any bad guys right at the moment. But <laughs> that could be deceiving. Okay. Interesting. Oh, look. Is that the... That might be the, the wolf. It's in the colored glass kind of protected area that I would expect. Um, I have a lot of inventory on me, and if it is the wool, one would expect... Okay, there's a creeper spawner. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break it. Okay, I see the creeper there. Oh, wow. My uh, efficiency 2 um, pickaxe surprised me with its efficiency. Okay, that creeper did drop some nice stuff. I don't need dirt, and I don't need the moss stone. Okay, he was dropping some experience bottles. There weren't very many. It looked like just three. Um, I imagine there's probably... Okay, I see the creeper walking over towards me over here. Yeah, I see more spawners over there, so I imagine there's actually a fair number of spawners over here. That's definitely going to be the wool. Um, I don't feel like dying around here when I'm carrying so many things, although, you know what? Let's just take a risk. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need the shovel. I'm going to put the golden apples on the bar in case we need them. And I need to throw out at least one more thing of inventory in order to get the wool box. Um, two more things, because I want to get the fireworks rockets out of there as well. But I think we can just run in there and grab it. I don't think it's sufficiently well protected uh, that I need to worry about it necessarily. Yes, yes, zombies. Give me a moment so I can throw things out of my inventory. Um, I don't need that. Honestly, I have more blocks than I know what to do with, so I don't need those. Okay, so I've got two spaces in my inventory. Let's stand over here. Break this. Sure enough, it is the wool. Things, sure enough, have also gotten messed up in my inventory. But there we go. Magenta wool. Um, I can easily imagine that there will be more things to find kind of over in this area. Uh, but... We managed to get out with the wool, so I think that is a pretty good accomplishment. I'm trying to remember from here kind of where the way back is. It's like slightly lower down, I think. Um, yeah, let me find my way back. Yeah, for whatever reason, I do have a hard time kind of like keeping myself oriented here in Aurora Valley, but there are the houses. Uh, up there is actually where the red mushroom and the wool, if you can call it a dungeon, the wool dungeon was. And up here is the waterfall that we first took up to the monument. And so I'm going to go back up the waterfall and we will celebrate our success. From the base of the waterfall, it probably took me like 45 seconds just to get up this hallway. And there was really nothing in here. Uh, before I get down to this thing that then goes to that intersection or brings me back to the monument over here. Uh, so previously I was saying I kind of liked the idea of how these shortcuts and different things were laid out with the different colored tunnels. But there's still also just like, I don't know, too much walking kind of in between or swimming especially. Swimming up the waterfall is slow. And furthermore, I've noticed this before. I'm sprinting right now and so you can see my hunger bars going down. And before I reach the monument, uh, it's probably going to be the case that I run out of, yeah, I can no longer sprint, and so now I'm walking just to get to the monument. And so I like the idea of the sprinting mechanic in general in terms of uh, it being that you run out of your ability to sprint, and so you can't just sprint around all the mobs forever. Uh, you need to kind of like recover somewhat, um, but it does make it so that the tunnels and the monument um, end up being kind of a slog because then you end up having to walk through portions. And so I'm actually going to uh, contact Render and suggest that here in the monument area and possibly in some of the shortcut tunnels, it should maybe replenish your hunger because those are mostly safe areas. And so you want the character to be able to sprint as much as they want in those areas and just have the sprinting mechanic apply uh, in the areas where there's actually monsters and you're fighting and you want the, you know, tiredness to kick in during fighting, uh, which makes it an interesting combat mechanic. But in any case, that was a little bit long-winded. Uh, we have found the magenta wool, which I expect will go right here. That's purple. Okay. This one's magenta. That's the one we have. Kablam! Hooray! Two wools down. That one was 
I think ridiculously easy is a reasonable thing to call it. I mean, look at the gear that I'm in, uh, but that's fair. I mean, Render said that this was a map that starts out easy and then kind of like works its way up more into medium difficulty. So we are clearly in the easy part of the curve, uh, but it has been raining loot. There are still many more things to find because in terms of emeralds, I'm still missing two emeralds from that area and one emerald that I expect is somewhere probably in the monument. I wonder actually, it might even be up like somewhere right here in the top. There's kind of like light on a couple of different sides where there might be glowstones. That's another place that I could look. In any case, uh, I will take a look probably off camera and see if I could find uh, those emeralds before next time. And so I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and I will see you again soon with more Corona Trials by RenderXR. Bye-bye.